Good evening, everyone. Well, the Marquette Bay Classic was pushed back to this weekend, and it did not disappoint. A lot of good fishermen came out and brought in some nice trout and some good salmon. 41 teams participated in today's event, and some good trout and salmon were caught. It was the biggest trout of the day. You'll see it in a bit. It was 19 pounds, 91 ounces right there. That fish looked like it could have eaten me, folks. That was a nice amount, but real screamers had the most weight on the trout side at 68 pounds, 85 ounces to take first place. They seem to just put 10 pounds on a fish on the table all afternoon. Bottom bouncer had the most live trout weight at 63 pounds, 55 ounces. Take three had the most live salmon at 15 pounds, 19 ounces. Bad habit had the most salmon at 17 pounds, 97 ounces. But the real screamers had the most weight at the best day for your overall winner. We got into a bunch of really nice fish. Uh, uh, we got a bunch of small ones and we picked up a nice 19 pounder and, and uh, a few other ones in the you know, 10 to 12 pound range and it was a good day. Here were the prizes awarded to the winners and that ended a good day of fishing out on Lake Superior. So let's go to some running. The first Iron Mountain Road and Trail Half Marathon took place. A nearly perfect day for running. Stevenson grad Trevor Vitor immediately dashed into the lead, turning north on US-2. After a couple turns, runners went around the south perimeter of Lake Antwine, and then they broke into a down and back section of Fume Lake Natural Area for about seven miles of trail running before returning to circle the north perimeter of Lake Antwine. Vitor kept the momentum for the 13.1 miles, winning in a time of one hour, 18 minutes and 21 uh, seconds. I've done uh, five different halves, and this is one of my favorites. It's uh, very scenic. I like the uh, trail going, but I, I'm not a fan of down and backs, but this is a lot better because uh, it was on a trail. The course was beautiful. Melissa, they, everyone did a really good job. It was really a beautiful morning. Sun coming through the trees at Fumi, and um, everything was well marked, and a lot of great volunteers. My mother-in-law is actually running today, and this weekend is the anniversary of when she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. It's 10 years from that, and we're here to celebrate and supporting her. We've got everybody's got ribbons and some hats, and um, she's amazing. She's out there kicking it barefoot. Proceeds in the race go to the Dickinson County Cancer Unit Loan Closet. The closet is a nonprofit organization that loans equipment to clients at no cost in the county and Wisconsin border towns. There was also a two mile melee hill mini marathon run and walk. Nearly 300 people participated in that event as well. Let's go to some high school volleyball in Marquette. The Arctic Cats Invitational. Here's Besmer taking on Gwyn. That was Brenna Bogashik with the kill in the early point. Then Sarah Targerin gets in on the action with a nice tip over the net into no man's land. But then Gwyn fired back in the first set. Chelsea Martin with the kill to spark some energy in the model towners. Then in the second set, the model towners went to town and gave Morgan Bruce the ball for the nice win in that set. Both teams had two wins and six losses in the tournament. Moved to Rapid River, taking on Superior Central. Superior Central with the first set, the kills like this. Vanessa Freeberg pounds that ball for the kill over the net for that point. Then Rapid River splits the match, and they did it taking advantage of the Cougars' errors. Here's Christy Kirstner with the kill. Rapid River went 5-3 on the day, and Superior Central went 3-5. We go to Calumet Copper Kings. Here's Teslin Tyner with the kill, but it's blocked by Ellen Tordzik, and that would put the Copper Kings ahead. Then Lexi Rowe would get on the party action with all the kills, and that would go along with Calumet's perfect day in pool play. So some good volleyball from all the teams across the UP. Let's keep talking about some volleyball. The 21st annual Forest Park Lady Trojans Volleyball Invitational was held in Crystal Falls. We'll start with Lake Linden Hubble in Lance for the lakes in the near court. Sarah Audit sets Mindy Caro for the kill. Lake Linden Hubble won both sets. The elementary gym for Water Sweet and uh, West Iron County. And West Iron is in the far court. The White Con set the ball to Emily Christensen, but Water Sweet. Ashley Peterson successfully blocks the kill 
for a Nimrod point. And back to the high school gym and Forest Park and Munising. Forest Park is going to be in the far court as they set up the lineups. And Maria Stankovic sets Lexi Gussert for the kill. And that can't be returned. Lake Linden and Forest Park played in the championship game. And Forest Park won in three sets. And a very close match to end a good day of volleyball. To the scoreboard we go. More high school volleyball. Gladstone beat Marion, Wisconsin two sets to nothing. They finished seventh place in that invitational out there. Then college volleyball. NMU beats Lake Superior State three to one. Lisa Studnicka showed a stellar performance with 17 kills on the afternoon. And then we had some college football to get to. Michigan Tech Womps Walsh as the first meeting between them, 30 to seven, 313 of total offense for the Huskies and Scarlet finished with 15 for 25 passing, 131 yards and two touchdowns. And NMU fell to Ohio Dominican 45 to seven. The only touchdown came with just four seconds to go in the third quarter, nine yard pass from Ryan Morley to wide receiver Christian Jesse in that ball game. So the NHL lockout is gonna be maybe happening again. The NHL says there'll be no bargaining with the players union Saturday, leaving nothing to stop a lockout for nearly a year. NHL commissioner Gary Bettman has said he will lock out players if a collective bargaining agreement wasn't set by the time the current one expires. And now appears unlikely that training camp will open next week. The regular season had been scheduled to begin October 11th, but it is now in peril not good news for the NHL and Detroit Red Wings fans. Remember, up at MichiganSource.com for more on all the football games today. All right. Thanks so much, Tom. But one big thing is that tomorrow, Detroit Lions do play on TV6 against the San Francisco 49ers. All right. So make sure you DVR it if you can't, if you're out there enjoying the day. Of course. All right. Thanks, Donnie. We'll be right back.